individuals who previously acquired criminal records for simple possession of cannabis should be allowed to shed the burden and the stigma of that record. A simple pot possession conviction means no more than 30 grams, and you have to be finished serving your sentence to apply. Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale says new legislation will eliminate the current 5- to 10-year waiting period and waive the usual $631 fee. This will eliminate what are disproportionate consequences and break down barriers, which could mean greater access to job opportunities, ed and education, housing, and even the ability to simply volunteer for a charity in your local community. A pardon does not guarantee, however, that you'll be allowed entry into the U.S. because the conviction isn't erased, just forgiven. Goodale says the legislation could be tabled before year's end. And while some are applauding the move to ease up on minor pot convictions, others are criticizing the government for not going further. The CBC's Catherine Cullen dives into that debate. You interact with police, you get treated as a criminal. Kanai Malali says police charged him with cannabis possession three times. He says even though there are no convictions on his record, the charges are enough to cause him grief. Just, you know having to wonder if that's the reason that you're getting pulled over right now, if this is the reason that you're getting searched, if this is the reason that you're not being accepted to a job, if this is the reason that you're getting turned back from the border, because all of those things have happened more than once. Stigma is part of the reason the government says it's putting forward a plan for pardons. Because uh, there is a disproportionate representation of young people from minorities or racialized communities who are saddled with criminal convictions for, convictions for uh, simple possession. This is going to make a real difference to people who've, uh, who've been uh, unfairly impacted by, uh, by the previous, uh, previous regime. But some say a pardon isn't enough. Pardoning is not going to help people out the way that people need to be helped out. The NDP and others are calling for expungement, basically a blanket erasing of simple possession charges. An expungement would easily facilitate for those people uh, the ability to get meaningful employment versus pardons um, are quite a lengthy process. The government disagrees, saying its pardon process will be faster and that expungement is only for special cases like erasing the criminal records of LGBTQ Canadians who were once charged just for having same-sex relationships. We have uh, utilized the tool of expungement uh, in uh, uh, cases where there is a profound historical injustice that needed to be corrected. Pot legalization, says Goodale, is just about a change in social attitudes. Malali calls pardons a good first step. Any of these people that have been affected by this is their name. Having innocence to your name is an important thing in this world. It doesn't matter what it is. But he says erasing everyone's record would give greater peace of mind. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa. So how many Canadians actually have a criminal record for simple pot possession? Well, the number 500,000 has actually been used previously, and we did try to get an updated number today, but even the government can't say for sure how many people have that record of simple possession due to the way records are kept across courtrooms. The government does believe, though, it to be in the tens of thousands. It's a dangerous substance, and I don't think our country needs it. People my age remember Cheech and Chong and how bored and unmotivated they were at 2% THC. Now it's 15. I think it's a sad day. I can't see this as a day where I'm rejoicing smoking a joint. I think it's a sad day for youth. So not everyone celebrating this first day of legalization. It was a small but vocal group of protesters gathered outside Bill Blair's constituency office in Toronto's East End. And their message, legalization is a mistake. They aren't alone, though. There are many Canadians who still have questions about whether this move will do more harm than good. And Minister Blair joins me now here in Ottawa to talk more about that. So what do you say to them today about why you believe uh, it is the right decision? Well, I understand when people are worried about their children, I'm worried about their kids too. And I'm worried about the fact that in Canada, we have the highest rates of, of marijuana use among our kids of any country in the world. I'm worried about the fact that the, the marijuana our kids are using, they're buying from criminals. You know, it's untested, unregulated, unsafe. The kids don't know its potency and, pro, and, and, and purity. And, and the people they're buying this drug from, they're only motivated by profit.
there are miners out there that are still going to find a way to get their hands on marijuana and consume it. So what to you then is a reasonable timeline to start seeing those kids get pulled out of that black market and for the black market to sort of dissipate? Well, I'll tell you, the right time to start is right away. And we started today. And, and in addition to now giving the police and parents far more effective tools to help those kids make safer, healthier, and, and, and more responsible choices, yep. we also have empowered, the police still have all the tools and, and, and legal authorities they previously possessed to deal with illicit production and distribution. We haven't taken any of those authorities away. The penalties are still in place and they can still enforce the criminal law. And, I, and I understand time, that, Minister, and I understand that, and I understand you're trying to do this starting today, but that wasn't the question. The question was, when should Canadians who are concerned about their kids, and you say that's what's motivating you, when should they expect to see a change on that front so that it is no longer available to them? Years, well, months, what are we it, talking about? Clearly it's, clearly it's not going to happen overnight. Organized crime has had 100% of this market for decades, and, and they're not just going to go quietly into the night. But at the same time, we now have the tools and competition in the marketplace to drive them out. And we've, we, we've got a comprehensive system of regulation. It's going to do a far better job of restricting the access that kids have to this. And, and so, you know, clearly we, we are attempting to re significantly reduce the amount of, of cannabis smoked by our kids and the age at which they, they, they use it. You know, we've had a lot of success, quite frankly, with a strict regulatory approach with tobacco. We have not had the same success with cannabis. About 11% of Canadian adults use tobacco and about 30% of Canadian adults use cannabis. And so we've got a lot of work to do, but we've got a model that works that we're going to apply in these circumstances. Okay, Minister Blair, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it, sir. Thanks, Rosie.